Good morning. Good morning. Let us begin our service, seated as we are. O oh God, you brought us to the light of this new day. Bring us to the guiding light of eternity. Let us now ground ourselves in the presence of God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. 
God be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring us forth in us the fruit of good works, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us acknowledge each other with a sign of peace. In particular, God's peace to those who are joining us online. God's blessing be with you all and welcome. God speaks to us. God speaks to us in the words and actions of the prophets and especially in your beloved Jesus the Christ. God speaks to us in the lives of others, especially in the poor. God speaks to us in mysterious words and ways. The first reading is from the book of Proverbs. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. A retelling of Psalm 112. Uh, let's alternate this side of the uh, chapel first and this side second. Praises to you, O gracious one. Blessed are those who reverence the Holy One, who delight in love consciousness. For they dwell with the beloved, and their children will learn of peace and justice. Abundance and wholeness will be their heritage, and truth will be their banner. Light penetrates the darkness uh, for those who face their fears. Love stands by them with mercy and forgiveness. It goes well for those who are loving and kind, who live their days with justice and integrity. They become co-creators with the Divine One. They bless the world with their presence. In times of trouble, they know not fear. Their hearts are firm, trusting in your loving companion presence. Yes, their hearts are steady. They are not afraid. Even their enemies are blessed by love. They are generous and give freely. The needy are offered shelter and food. Justice and mercy make their home there and their righteousness and yours forever. The unloving are witness to this. Who knows when the seed will find a fertile heart? The fruits of those who know love are blessing to all. And the second reading is from Paul to the Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. 
so we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect and do good. No, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are most pleasing to God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat and meet a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host and the host who invited you both may come and say to you give this person your place but when you are invited and then in disgrace you would start to take the lowest place but when you are invited go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes he may say to you Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they might invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be seated. I'd like to begin my sermon by inviting you in prayer. On page three, let us say together the prayer, the colic prayer for today. Proper 17, the one on page 3 at the bottom. <coughs> Call it. Let us pray it together. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. 
I would like to, instead of preaching on the scripture, to preach on this prayer. I know usually priests preach on the sermon, on the, the scripture reading, but I like from time to time to forget about the Bible and focus on the liturgy. Because one of the things that's beautiful in our tradition, um, which is all the historical Christian churches, many of these prayers are very ancient. And of course, they're not scripture, but I'm pretty sure God speaks to them too. And sometimes they speak to them better than the Bible itself, you might, might say. Because I think the Spirit of God is in many things. So I would like to meditate it because this is a prayer that I really, really like. It's from the Book of Common Prayer. But really, and by the way, we call it the collect prayer, but it has nothing to do with the collection plate. <laughs> okay, someone once is that when we do the collection? The collect is simply to collect ourselves. It's the beginning prayer, and we collect ourselves in, in silence and in prayer. So this collect prayer is very old. They think it's around the 6th, 7th, most 8th century. So it's, what is the math there? A uh, long time ago. 1,300 years ago? 1,400 years ago? It's, it's a long long history. And it was placed in, in our Book of Common Prayer by Thomas Cramer, who was the first um, in the Anglican Church, the one who developed our book, the Book of Common Prayer for all the Anglican Church in 1549. Now he added one little piece. He let, well, changed a little bit, but he added, increase in us true religion. I would like to begin before pointing out this, this part that the prayer begins by this beautiful petition. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. And I've always found it very touching. I don't, I don't know why. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. And for me it's very visual. I mean, gardeners like grafting. It's, I mean, I see a pruning. No, they don't call it pruning. They call it, there's a special scissor they do, right? That do these cuts in the, in the rootstock and, and it makes a, a hole and you can place the, I think they call it the scion, right? You put it in and you tie it up or depending on this technique. But I can just feel in this prayer all those very visceral elements of grafting. And the grafting, what does it do? What does grafting do? Why do we use graft? I mean, in pruning. Brings new life. Brings new life. It, it grows new fruit um, on the uh, rootstock. Mm. It grows new fruit. On well-known, well-established rootstock. Uh -huh. And it's different. And it's different. It changes, it, trans it can transform the, that rootstock. So the beauty of grafting is it becomes, one becomes part of the other. And what this prayer is saying, graft in me the love of your name, it's the whole idea which is the center of the Christian message is to become divine. That's the whole story. Christ became human in order that humans can become divine. That's the whole story. And when we pray, graft in me the love of your name, you have to remember, that it's, people say, why the name? You know that Jews do not speak the name of God. It's too sacred. Um, it's, they would say Adonai, which is the Lord. But also, they also say Hashem. Have you heard that? Hashem. Do you know what Hashem means? The name. The name. So when they this talk about God, the name is another way of saying God, but that's too big a name, so I'll just say the name. So when we say graft in our hearts, so our hearts is the rootstocks, rootstock. Graft in our hearts the love of your name, but we're saying graft in me is God, God's self. Now, after this prayer of grafting, it says, increase in us true religion. 
And I mentioned to you Thomas Cramer added that adjective, truth. And we can see a little bit what was going on. It was the Reformation, a lot of fights, hundreds of Christians killing each other, Protestants killing Catholics, Catholics killing Protestants, Bloody Mary, Elizabeth, all that sad and terrible story. There's a great miniseries I'm watching about precisely this. And, and it was this whole, what is true? Do you have the true one? You have the true religion? I have the true religion. Do you have yours? And it's always a problem when true religion refers to someone else's religion. But notice that this prayer is increase in us. To be honest, what we should be worried about is mine. What I do is it true religion? Not so much about someone else's religion. It's interesting that Christ was very critical of Judaism. Now, we understand sometimes sadly that Christ was criticizing the Jews as if Christ was not a Jew. He was a Jew. He was not a Christian. He died a Jew. And he felt himself a Jew. So he criticizes his own family. It's just like me criticizing the Episcopal Church. Yeah, we, are, we have lots of bad things. Um, a little bit iffy when I start someone else's religion. It's kind of a... So today, this prayer is increase in us. Begin us. Pointing our fingers to ourselves. Today, instead of true versus false religion, there's another dichotomy that a lot of people use, and you probably heard the cliche, I am spiritual but not religious. And there is a truth in it. There is a truth in the Reformation. There were blatantly um, awful things that the Roman Catholic Church at the time, and it was a self-criticism. Um, and when people say I'm spiritual, non-religious, there is a deep criticism and a very valid criticism. Religion is associated with superficiality, country club, um, sometimes dangerous, oppressive, non-thinking, all that, that describes religion. But just as true religion, I think that dichotomy between true religion and false religion can become problematic when we start using, I'm spiritual, you're religious, which is a little bit of like, you're religious. <laughs> There's a, a Harvard professor, Amy Hollywood, she said, she wrote a beautiful article about precisely this dichotomy, he says, for the spiritual, religion is inert, arid, and dead. The practitioner of religion, whether consciously or not, is at least without feeling, and at worst, insincere. Spirituality has to do rather with the heart, with feelings, experience of the divine or some higher power. She does not subscribe to beliefs handed down by existing religious tradition, nor does she engage in the ritual life of any particular institution. So it's this, I can do it on my own. I don't need you all, this thing. I need to find God by myself, without any scriptures or prayers or priests or church. I find God on my own. And I think there's a very deep truth to this. Because at the end of the day, it's us naked before God. I mean, there's nothing more. But at the same time, it, it's a little bit problematic because truly, we can't, we're not alone. And as you all know, people who, sorry, God spoke to me, sometimes we have to be a little bit careful. Because on our own, a lot of crazy things can happen. At least I know that by myself. We get delusional and things that we think are right are not true. If, you, if I let myself just on my own, I don't need anybody else, uh, I could find myself going in strange places. So there's this tension, and I think that is the beauty of the tension between spirituality, which is, at the end of the day, what is more important, and religion that is, how do you call that in, in agriculture? I'm talking uh, the things that the plants grow and they, you help them 
a trellis or yeah, a like a, a structure, a trellis yeah. that helps and sustains. But it's not the most important thing. Religion for me is that which helps the plant grow, which assists the grafting to occur. It's like the little tape maybe, or the, the precise way of splitting. It, it is an assistance of allowing the nurturing um, savia, we say in Spanish, the inside of the, the little juice of the plants. How do you call that in English? The what? Sap. sap. The sap. To allow those saps to mingle and mix and become one. That is the only purpose of religion, of the trellis. So when we pray, graft in our hearts the love of your name, and then we ask, increase in us true religion. What I pray is like, is what I do here. All this prayer and these things I put on, does it help me increase my true religion? Does it increase my spirituality, my experience of God? And I think that is the goal, the ultimate goal of all spiritual religious tradition. I would like to invite you as we come forward for communion to imagine yourselves and do like a visualization. Visualizations are, are great, for me at least, because they, they kind of enact what we're saying. And today, as we pray, craft in my heart the love of your name, increase in me true religion. As we come to communion, imagine yourself as that, let's say the rootstock. Imagine yourself the rootstock. And imagine that cut is your vulnerable place. It is vulnerable because you're, you're making a little uh, muesca, a little hole. I've been too, too long I spent in Puerto Rico. Spanish is coming first. <laughs> a wound. <laughs> a wound. So you, you have to create a wound. It is this vulnerable part that opens up. And that's who you are as you come to communion. And as you kneel there, you're, you're saying, here it is. Attach yourself to me. And imagine communion as that sign, that, that root that is getting placed in you symbolically, but at the same time very real, to grow into this new plant. And Think of all of this that surrounds you physically. Scripture and Bible and lamps and candles and acolytes. All of that is this trellis that is helping you grow. Making that connection. That is the most important thing. All of this can go away. The most important thing is that connection. You know, I just say it and I get a little bit, I get chills. Um, because that's the whole end game of this whole thing. Okay? So as we approach communion, think of that, but don't leave it here in communion only, in church. When you go out, when you help someone, that's what you're doing. You're allowing this graft to happen. When you're charitable to someone who is suffering, you are allowing this graft to come to you. When you're kind with your neighbor, when you're loving to your family members, when you do anything in the world that propagates this love, compassion, what you're doing is communion. What you're doing is God, graft in me the love of your name. Amen. We pray for the world and the church. Lord, we remember your leaders, Michael, Greg, Berto, and Hugh, who spoke the word of God to us. 
May we imitate Jesus with the assurance that Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. Lord, we give thanks to these United States, asking that our leaders honor our heritage while keeping us free, safe, and secure. The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. Lord, we give thanks for the beauty of the earth. Give us the strength to protect and preserve it for future generations. The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. Lord, we give thanks for our life on Orcas Island and for the upcoming completion of the Prune Alley project. <laughs> the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. <laughs> Lord, we pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit from addiction, unemployment, mental illness, or homelessness, particularly those we now name either silently or aloud. Susan. And especially for those on our prayer list, our parish prayer list, Challen, Judy and Doug, Linda Lynn and Jim, Ingrid, Stephen, John, the class family, Luca, Becky, Sarah, Evelyn, Lorinda, Zach, Effie, Stephen and Calder, Margaret, Lisa, Fred, Elise, Jan, Stephen, Nancy, Carl, the Cook family, Bill, Audrey, Joyce, Dave, Janet, Carl and Juliana, Anne, Lynn, the Olszewski family, and those for whom no one prays. May they be comforted by our holy name. The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. Lord, we pray for those near death those that stand vigil, as well as the recently departed and those that mourn. May we take comfort in the belief that angels will guide them from this temporal world and greet them in their heavenly realm. The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. Lord, the light of the minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the hearts that serve you, help us following the example of your servant, Augustine of Hippo, so to know that you may truly love, so that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may fully serve you. The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. Spirit. Let us pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, George Garrels, Harlan Pedersen, and Bill Bangs, as they begin another year, and grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. For a couple of announcements, there is Agape team meeting today. A reminder that our Eucharistic prayer is not printed in the bulletin, and it invites us instead of reading and using that part of our brain and sensory apparatus to use our ears to listen rather than eyes to read, to use our eyes instead of reading ink and paper to focus on the altar, on the bread and on the wine to use our hands later on to take that bread, to drink from that cup, to allow our other senses to come into play. Um, and you'll notice as you pay attention to the words, they take in the readings for today. They incorporate uh, the themes and the topics of scripture. Uh, book Club is deciding on a new book for you if you're interested We've decided to, the group has decided that they want a biography of someone, a spiritual person that is contemporary to us. So if you have ideas, the task is 
bring ideas of a spiritual biography um, of someone that is um, enlightening, encouraging in our own journeys. That's book club through Zoom at 1 p.m. Our centering prayer is going to be, we're going to do it in the retreat room instead of here in the church just to experience our new retreat room, which is the end. That is 12.15 on Friday. And then at 1 p.m., uh, our burning questions group decided to, f to explore for some time chanting. And we will be meeting, first of all, to chant and have spiritual devotional conversation afterwards to deepen this practice and what it means and how we can use it as a trellis for our own grafting, right? Um, that's Friday at 1. Just to put in your calendars, Holy Hikes will be September 17th at 3. And on October 26th, from noon until 4.30 p.m., Bishop Rickle will be coming to Emmanuel to um, lead a, a, rich, a workshop called Estate Planning and Legacy Giving. And there's a sign-up sheet uh, available in the parish hall or let Stuart know. That's all I have. Do not neglect to do good to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Please stand as you're able. Let us sing together the doxology found on page 10. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. 
you notice we have two chalices, I should have mentioned it. One for those who would like to drink directly from the chalice, and for those, another chalice for those who would like to intinct, to dip the consecrated bread in the consecrated wine. Um, just let Antoinette know, she'll be changing chalices. If you would like to dip, intinct, just leave the host and then when she comes. If you would like to drink from the cup, just consume it before she comes so she knows what to do. And if you would like not to drink or anything, just as usual, just cross your hands. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Exalted above all is your name, God of Jacob. For you feed your people, not only for today, but for eternity, with your food that truly satisfies. When your people hungered, you longed to feed them with the finest wheat. And through the grace of your servant Joseph, turned famine into abundant provision. When you brought your children out of slavery, you filled their mouths with good things and led them to life in a land of plenty. In the fullness of time, your son gave us a place of honor at the banquet of salvation, which is more than we could ever deserve. And so we rejoice with all who feed on him by faith with thanksgiving, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven as we join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Transforming God as you exalt the humble and the humble and humble the exalted, pour your grace upon your church gathered to remember the dying and rising of your Son. Send your Spirit upon this bread and this cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of, your, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Inviting God, as in your Son you beckon the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame, visit your church where it is poor and make it reflect the wonder of your love. Renew your people where they are crippled that your power may be made perfect in weakness. Empower your children where they are blind, that they may know you more truly. And uphold your saints where they are lame, that they may find friends gracious in support and strength, with whom they may never be afraid. Make your church a place of hospitality, that it may entertain angels unawares. For in Christ you are the same, yesterday, today, and forever, and in the power of your Spirit, 
we shall never walk alone. Through this doxology of praise, I invite you to join me. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Let us pray. Papa, Mama, Father, Mother, Abba, Amma. Beloved our God, source of our life, creator of all. Giver of life, bearer of pain, maker of love. Your name be held, be hallowed, your name be honored, your name be embodied. Your justice rule us, your shalom unite us. Your compassion enfold us. As your, so your wisdom be our guide. Your way be our path. Your will be done well. As the bread of our need. Give us the manna of enough. Give us the taste of your tomorrow. Give us our debts remit. As we our hurts forgive. As we your mercy show. In the hour of temptation, in the times we are tested, in the worst of trials, from the powers that bind, from the coils that trap, from the grip of evil, for yours is the goodness, yours is the joy. Yours is the life. Yours is the glory. Yours is the victory. Yours is the world. For time and eternity. For age after age. So be it. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, and that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. And the Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.